In this topic, we will be talking about the multinationals reaction to the repatriation process. In the previous topic, we discussed about the outcomes of a well-managed repatriation process uh, and the multinational reactions to them. Uh, in this particular topic, we are going to talk about the specific application of the multinationals reaction to the aspect of staff availability and career expectations, both from the, uh, from the aspect of the individual as well as from the multinational. Uh, as we have already discussed many times that repatriation is a very important topic. It is a very important aspect of the organization of the expatriation process. Uh, in this particular uh, topic, the application of the repatriation process uh, is uh, discussed with regards to the career expectations of uh, people who are sent on international assignments. Uh, so people who are sent on international assignments, how do then, uh, how does it affect their careers? How does the multinational uh, perceive about their careers and how do they perceive about their own careers? And the implications of uh, various different perceptions of the multinationals regarding the careers of their people who are working on international assignments and then the implications of that. Uh, multinationals must uh, invest in the repatriation process and one of the aspects of this is that they should ensure that it should lead to the career development of the person who is sent on an international assignment. Uh, but we see from surveys and from research data that multinationals do not give a lot of importance to the repatriation process. However, it is something which is, uh, which is desired and something which would lead to positive outcomes. How would it lead to positive outcomes? Uh, a person who is repatriated back to the organization and is uh, positioned in a place where he is, he can uh, first of all share his knowledge and secondly, uh, he is placed on a position which is uh, a development on his career that would lead to uh, the uh, to the creation of a culture, creation on an, of an impression that International assignments are something which are uh, uh, which create value for the employee in the organization. So, if uh, you repatriation ke baad apne employee ko proper tarikay se uske career ko uh, look after karenge, to aapke organization mein ye samjha jayega ki acha ha international assignment pe jaane se career development hoti hai. Aur agar aap repatriation process ko thik tarikay se deal nahi karenge to phir uski uh, uh, implications ye hongi ke log international assignments pe jana nahi chahenge aur agar aap is tarah ki uh, management uh, techniques apply karenge apna repatriation process ko strengthen karenge to jo humne baat ki ke bahut dafa ye baat ki ke international uh, hrm mein we want to develop a pool of global managers uh, uh, the repatriation process makes sure that uh, a well-managed career leads to the development of a pool of global managers. Uh, this is something which is ideally required. Uh, but um, when we look at the data, we see that uh, very few companies, uh, they give a lot of importance to the repatriation. And in many companies, uh, about 50% uh, position is not guaranteed when a, once a person comes back um, and is repatriated to the home country. This has led to the concept of uh, actually boundaryless careers. Um, boundaryless careers and uh, now organizations because um, uh, they do not uh, give that kind of career systems to their people in which uh, People, they stay with the organization for their entire lives, uh, including uh, people who go on international assignments. Uh, now the concept of the boundaryless careerist is coming into, uh, is emerging. And what is a boundaryless careerist? Is That is a highly qualified mobile professional who builds his or her career competencies and labor market value through transfers across boundaries. So uh, it means that a person who, who, who builds his uh, experiences, 
who has a lot of learning experience who has a lot of value because uh, he or she moves from one place to the other or wo jo knowledge or expertise ek jagah se learn karte hain wo usko ja ke dusri jagah pe apply karte hain wahan pe wo mazid learning karte hain aur usko ja ke wo kisi aur jagah pe apply karte hain aur yahi cheez jo hai ye international assignments ke andar aur international hrm ke andar bhi aapko nazar aa nazar aati hai data ke andar bhi ke carriers jo hain ab unko boundary less samjha jata hai yani ke ek organization ke andar aap apna jo hai wo career throughout apna lifetime career nahi spend karte this is also taken a form of protein carriers uh, and protein carrier put the word protein that has come from the greek word proteus who was a greek god uh who could uh, change his form and shape so uh isse aap khud andaaza laga sakte hain ki protein ka kya matlab hai ki a carrier which can change its form and shape a carrier which is not something which is really structured and predefined and something that you are going to know that okay if i enter this organization this is the career ladder that i can follow and this is where i can end up uh so it is based on the notion that it is the individual and not the organization they are responsible for their careers and uh, it is sometimes used to reflect the idea of a self directed career with continuous learning so because the concept of continuous learning is now very much uh, applicable in current organizations so people want to keep on learning they don't want to be stuck in one organization and saturate their knowledge pool they want to learn more and more because knowledge management and knowledge uh, uh, is uh, knowledge um, uh, acquisition transfer and management all of this is has become one of the major activities of organizational life and Uh, knowledge can only be enhanced when your learning is diversified which cannot be done when you do it in one place only so uh, this is something which from the individual side is also developing and from the multinationals aspect is also developing and that is why um, uh, protein type boundaryless careers are emerging um and therefore multinationals they focus and they focus the, the emphasis is on importance of learning and skill de- development and uh, the, impo- the the employees also don't place importance on uh, a long term career rather they place the importance that how much skill they are going to learn how much learning is going to take place that is something which they uh, value and uh, this is something which drives them to take the international assignments not because they want to stay long term in the organization uh then there are also uh, another type of careers uh, which is of uh, multinational itinerants my itinerant se aapko andaza ho gaya hoga this is a self explanatory word that people who are quite mobile and uh, um, the international itinerants they are professional managers who over their careers are employed for their ability by at least two business organizations that are not related to each, each other in at least two different countries so uh, we call a person a an international itinerant who uh, uh, works in different countries with different organizations agar to aap ek hi country ke sath different organization ek hi organization ke sath different countries mein shift ho rahe hain then you are not considered an itinerant uh, but if you are shifting your organization as well as you are shifting the country that means that you are somebody who is uh, is quite mobile and is considered to be an international itinerant and these people are valued because they have international knowledge they have knowledge of the market they know how to get things done in the international arena and that why that's why different organizations they pick them up and they employ them on various different terms it could have different implications for the organization an international itinerant is possibly uh, likely to have lack of depth in depth knowledge about the organization uh, it could have lesser control of uh, international employees and uh, a person who is not a, uh, a, a who is not a part of the organization 
he may be disregarding the policy of developing uh, global um, you know corporate leaders so that is something which are the disadvantages of employing uh, multinational iterants uh, so it, uh, concluding this uh, we would say that um, uh, it is from the research we have we we see that uh, firms who um, aim to achieve a high level of strategic fit should invest in expatriate management including repatriation because if you want to develop that pool of global leaders it means that you need to invest in your people uh, and that means that you need to invest in your repatriation process that is also evident from a uh, from a research studies and it was found that um, where international assignments were given high value um, carried high level of international uh, hrm activity and expatriates had traditional career expectation and that led to higher retention rate uh, so where the organization they placed a high level of value on the international experience they did a lot of ihrm activities and uh, that that resulted in higher retention rates of uh, people who went on international assignments so um, it is something which the organizations must uh, uh, take care the repatriation process must be focused on career development of uh, their employees it is something which is beneficial for the organization and could lead to development of a global pool of managers